Hello friends. In this video we are going to discuss JEE Advanced 2014 Mathematics paper. So this is the paper one. The first question it states let M and N be two 3 into 3 matrices such that Mn equals Nm. Further, if M is not equal to N square and M square equals N raised to the power 4 then option A determinant of m square plus mn square is 0 option b there is a 3 into 3 non zero matrix u such that m square plus mn square into u is a zero matrix c determinant of m square plus mn square is greater than or equal to 1 for a 3 into 3 matrix u if m square plus mn square into u equals to zero matrix then u is a zero matrix so here we are given that uh, m is not equal to n square. This implies us that m minus n square is, e is not equal to 0. This is the first point and the second point is which is given to us that uh, m square equals n raised to the power 4 which implies us m square minus n raised to the power 4 equals 0. So from this we get m minus n square into m plus n square plus n square m plus m n square sorry here it is minus so uh, this is minus this becomes zero and now since it is uh, given to us that as m n equals and m so from here we can say that m n square equals n m n so since m n equals uh, since m n equals n m therefore this equals n n m so this is equal to n square m so since m square uh, since m into n square equals n n square into m so if we if we substitute this expression here then this expression will get to 0 so from here uh, this suppose if this is the first expression then then one becomes this becomes m minus n square into m plus n square equals 0 so therefore Therefore, either, so from here, either m plus n square equals 0 or m minus n square e and or here, uh, so either m plus n square equals to 0 or m minus n square and m plus n square, both are, both are singular, okay. So these uh, these are the facts or the or these are the inferences from the results that we have arrived at, and so from here there exist therefore so there exist there exist a three into three non-zero matrix there exist a three into three non-zero matrix U that is m minus n square such that such that m plus n square into u equals 0 ok so this is a 3 into 3 non zero matrix m minus n square is u such that m plus n square into u equals 0. So uh, from here we can easily see that m plus n square into u this is u. So m plus n square into u equals 0. So this implies us that m square plus m into n square into u equals 0. Okay. So also in case of uh, determinants also also m square plus m n square equals magnitude of m into m plus n square equals 0.
Okay. So, uh, from these two inferences, we can uh, arrive at a result that options that there is a determinant of m, uh, m square plus mn square is 0. This option is correct. And there is a 3 into 3 non-zero matrix u such that m square plus mn square into u is a zero matrix. And option C and option D, they both are incorrect. Okay. So, you can see easily from here from these results. So, let's see another question. The question says for every pair of continuous functions f g from 0, 1 to r such that maximum of f x such, uh, 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 such that x belongs to 0, 1 equals maximum of g x such that x belongs to 0, 1. The correct statement is option A f c square plus 3 f c equals g c square plus 3 g c for some c belonging to 0, 1. And similarly, the other options are given fc square plus fc equals gc square plus 3gc and fc square plus 3fc equals gc square plus, uh, plus gc and fc square equals gc square. So, from here, let f and g be maximum. Suppose, uh, suppose the graph is given something like this, okay, and we have plotted fg against x. Now, suppose this is C1 and here this is C2 and this is 0 and suppose here lies option 1. Okay, so this uh, here lies 1 and uh, this is here C1, this is here C2. Now, let F and G be maximum at C1 and C2 respectively. So, at C1, suppose FG is maximum and at C2, g is maximum. So, at c1 f is maximum and at c2 g is maximum. Okay. So, here f is maximum and here g is maximum. Suppose these are their maximum values. So, now uh, here let let h x equals f x minus g x. Okay. So, now at, uh, at, c, at c1 uh, just consider that uh, here, just consider that the point G lies somewhat here. I mean, uh, F and G are respectively maximum at C1 and C2. So, if HX equals FX minus GX, then H C1 will be equal to F C1 minus G C1. And at C1, F is maximum. So, therefore, so, uh, therefore, this expression will be positive. Okay? This expression will be positive. And at C2, this will be F C2 minus G C2. At C2, G is maximum. So, therefore, this expression will be negative. Okay? So, therefore, uh, since here hx, if we uh, if we see the behavior of hx, then hx at c1 will be here somewhat. At c1 it will be here, and at c2 it will somewhat be here because at c2 it is negative. Okay, so there must be some value within c1 and c2 at which h is being zero. Okay, so therefore hx has at least one root in c1 and C2. So, therefore, H X has at least one root in C1, C2. Okay? Within C1 and C2, there must be one, one value. Suppose this is C at which H X is 0. Now, since H X is 0, therefore, F X now, since at C, HX is 0. Okay. So, uh, therefore, FC minus GC equals 0. And C lies between C1 and C2. So, therefore, from here, we can say that FC equals GC for some C belonging to C1, C2. Okay. So, from here we can infer this and uh, from here we can come to two conclusions. First is 
एफ सी स्क्वायर इक्वल्स जी सी स्क्वायर फॉर सम सी एंड सेकेंड इज थ्री एफ सी इक्वल्स थ्री जी सी सो इफ वी एड फर्स्ट एंड टू वी कैन अराइव एट अनदर कंक्लूजन दैट एफ सी स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री एफ सी इक्वल्स जी सी स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री जी सी ओके so these are the conclusions that we have arrived at so from here from our conclusions the correct options are option a and option d okay so now let's see another question the question says here the question says let f from 0 to infinity to r be given by fx integration from 1 by x to x e raised to the power minus t plus 1 by t dt upon t then fx is monotonically increasing on 1 infinite b fx is monotonically decreasing on 0 1 c fx plus f1 by x equals 0 for all x from uh, for all x belonging to 0 to infinity and d f raised to the power 2 x f 2 raised to the power x is an odd function of x on r well we are given here f x Equals from one by x to x e raised to the power minus t plus one upon t dt upon t. Okay, so this is what we have given. We are, now uh, to go further, we need to understand one formula. The formula is something like this: d by dx. The formula is something like this. d by dx infinity from g1 x to g2 x fx dx equals it equals uh, f g2 x okay uh, g dash 2 x minus f g1 x into g1 dash x okay so this is one formula that we need to know in order to go further in solving this problem so now uh, uh, if we apply this particular formula here in this given expression then we will arrive at uh, uh, the conclusion that f dash x here is 2 e raised to the power minus x plus 1 upon x upon x okay now since uh, x is always going to be zero uh, going to be greater than zero since since x is always going to be greater than zero so therefore this particular expression is always going to be therefore f dash x is always going to be zero and since f dash x is always going to be zero therefore f x is monotonically increasing on 1 to infinity okay so therefore therefore f x is monotonically increasing on 1 to infinity in fact it is increasing on Zero to infinity with zero is not included. Okay, in the option it is given to be one to infinity. So option one is option A is correct here. F x is monotonically increasing on one to infinity. This is given to be decreasing here. Okay, so now, uh, now moving forward, moving forward. Now since here f x plus f One upon x equals integration from one upon x to x e raised to the power minus t plus one upon t dt upon t plus integration from x to one upon x e raised to the power minus t plus one upon t dt upon Okay, so now since we know that in case of uh, 
since we know here that in case of an integration from a to b if we change the base then it changes the sign this is equal to minus of integration from b to a okay so this is the fact that we know here so therefore we can observe here very carefully that if we see that this base is from 1 by x to x and whereas this range is from x to 1 upon x so therefore these are just the opposite of each other and hence the sign can be changed so therefore if we if we observe it then we will find that f x plus f 1 upon x here will go to 0 so therefore f x plus f 1 upon x equals to 0 for all x belonging to 0 to infinity okay so option C is also correct here. Now, since we know that uh, 2 raised to the power x equals equals 1 upon 2 raised to the power minus x. Okay. So now, in this case, f to x plus f 1 upon 2x equals f x plus f 2 raised to the power minus x so this is 0 and since we know that in case of an odd function in case of an odd function f x plus f minus x equals 0 so therefore this condition is satisfied in this case so this is f 2 raised to the power x okay to f 2 raised to the power x plus f 2 raised to the power minus x equals 0 here so therefore f 2x so therefore f 2x is an odd function okay so hence here the correct options are option a option c and option d okay these are the correct options so let's uh, see what the other question asks us the question says let a belongs to r and let f from r to r be given by fx equals x raised to the power 5 minus 5x plus a then fx has three real roots if a is greater than 4 fx has only one real root if a is greater than 4 fx has three real roots if a is smaller than minus 4 and fx has three real roots if a belongs to from minus 4 to 4 okay now here f x equals x raised to the power 5 minus 5x plus a okay now if f x equals to 0 then a equals 5x minus x raised to the power 5 okay so now let's say if a is equal to 0 if a is equal to 0 then fx equals x raised to the power 5 minus 5x okay so therefore fx will be x x raised to the power 4 minus 5 so it will it has the three roots therefore x equals 0 so now if fx if we put fx equals to 0 then this is satisfied by x equals to 0 5 raised to the power 1 upon 4 and 5 raised to the, and minus 5 raised to the power 1 upon 4 so this is how this condition is satisfied so therefore if we plot a graph here the graph will look something like this okay the graph will look something like this okay so now we need to find these points Okay, so we are going to draw this particular graph uh, on the next page as well. So this point is minus 5 raised to the power 1 upon 4. This point is 5 raised to the power 1 upon 4 and this is obviously 0. Okay, so uh, this is f and this is x. Okay, so uh, let's move further. Let's move further here. Now if f dash x equals to 0 it means 5x raised to the power 4 minus 5 becomes 0 
okay so uh, from uh, from here from here the condition which is which is satisfied are the values of x must be 1 or x must be minus 1 okay so therefore the graph here the exact graph will look something like this this will be 1 and this will be minus 1 okay so this will be minus 1 this will be 1 now this point is going to be equal to 4 and this point is going to be equal to minus 4 as f1 f1 will be equal to in case of a raised to the a equals 0 so f1 will be equal to 1 raised to the power 5 minus 5 this is going to be minus 4 and f minus 1 is going to be minus 1 raised to the power 5 plus 5 this is going to be 4 so f1 is minus 4 and f minus 1 is 4 so therefore f minus 1 is is 4 and f1 is minus 4 so now let's suppose that if we are increasing the value of a by increasing the value of a if we put a here so therefore f1 in original equation i'm talking about original equation for a all right let's write with some other pen so for a is not equal to 0 f1 will be minus f1 will be uh, f1 will uh, uh, f1 will be minus 4 plus a and f minus 1 will be 4 plus a okay so if we here is since it uh, this will be uh, for f minus 1 it will be 4 plus a and f1 will be minus 4 plus a so therefore if we add a here then the graph will start rising as the graph starts rising then the number of roots will start decreasing and see if at some point f becomes suppose at x equals to at a equals to 4 suppose if a becomes equal to 4 then the graph will look something like this the graph here the given graph which is here it will rise and it will look something like this okay this will be this will just touch this will just touch this point will just touch and uh, this point will be suppose a this will be suppose uh, I should not write here a so this point will be suppose x1 and this point will be x2 so at x at a is a equals 4 this fx will have only two roots and as soon as a is greater than 4 then this graph will rise further upwards and it will look something like this so therefore it will have only one root here okay so for a greater than 4 now similarly so therefore from here we can conclude that for a greater than 4 for a greater than 4 in fact for a greater than 4 fx has one root and similarly if we if we uh, start putting the value of a in negative then for a smaller than minus 4 again fx has only one root in that case the graph will descend in uh, instead of ascending okay so from here we can conclude that if a therefore the final conclusion is that apart from these two conclusions there is one more conclusion for a belonging to minus 4 to 4 f x equals to 0 has three real roots okay so the correct option here in this case our option fx has only one real root if a is greater than 4 this option is correct option a is incorrect and option b is correct so the correct options are option b and option d okay so let's see another question question says if 
f is such that a if f is from a b to 1 to infinity b a continuous function and let g from r to r be defined as gx equals 0 if x is smaller than a gx equals integration from a to x f t dt if x lies between a and b and gx equals from integration from a to b f t dt if x is greater than b then gx is a continuous but not differentiable at a gx is differentiable on r gx is continuous but not differentiable at b gx is continuous and differentiable at either a or b but not both well let's see what uh, are the different values of a at different values of what are the different values of g actually at different values of x well from g a negative will be g will be limit h tends to 0 g my uh, a g a minus h so this will be 0 since it is given that if x is is smaller than a then the value of g is 0 okay and g a is equal to from integration from a to a f t d t since limits are same therefore this is also going to be 0 limits are same and now g a positive is limit h tending to 0 integration from a to a plus h f t dt and since h is tending to 0 if you substitute the value of h then the limits will become same and this will also be 0 okay now this is the case of a now let's move with b with b g b negative equals limit h tending to 0 from a to b minus h f t dt so this will be if we substitute the value of h here as 0 then this will simply be a to b f t dt okay and g b here g b is from a to b f t dt and this is also equal to g b positive as for the greater value of b the value of g is same so therefore from these two we can conclude that therefore g x is continuous is continuous at x equals to a as well as at x equals to b so this is continuous now in order to find out the, the differentiability of this function we are going to we are going to uh, see that uh, uh, if this is the case by applying the first principle of differentiation well now from here now g dash a negative is limit h tending to 0 g a minus h minus g a upon minus h so this is uh, is going to be 0 if we if we substitute uh, the value of uh, here if we substitute the value of h and we finally we finally uh, we finally apply uh, the and uh, this uh, principle then the we, we we are going to get this value as 0 because this is getting to be 0 g a minus h is as we know is already g a minus h is already 0 and g a is already 0 okay so from here since we know that g a is 0 g a minus h is 0 so this is going to be 0 g dash a negative is going to be 0 so g dash a positive will be limit h tending to 0 g a plus h minus g a upon h so this will be limit h tending to 0 integration from a to a plus h f t dt this is g a plus h g a is 0 so this will be 0 upon h now again the 
the formula which we applied in question number three we are going to apply it here and also using L hospitals rule well L hospitals rule L hospitals rule it states that limit extending to a g x upon h x equals limit extending to a g dash x upon h dash x so if we apply this particular rule over here then we are going to get um, this uh, the value of g dash a positive s therefore g dash a positive is equal to limit h tending to 0 f a plus h upon 1 so this is nothing but f a which is not equal to 0 f a is not equal to 0 so therefore g dash a negative is not equal to g dash a positive so therefore from here hence g x is not differentiable it is not differentiable at x equals to a okay so now let's see what is the case with b g dash b negative is limit h tending to 0 g b minus h minus g b upon minus h which is equal to limit h tending to 0 integration from a to a plus h this is uh, well yeah here this is integration of uh, a to b minus h ft dt minus integration from a to b ft dt upon minus h which after applying l hospitals rule reduces to h tending to 0 f b minus h upon 1 which is equal to f b this is not equal to 0 okay and here g dash b positive is equal to limit h tending to 0 g b plus h minus g b upon h which is equal to limit h tending to 0 from a to b f t dt minus integration from a to b f t dt okay upon h which is equal to 0 so therefore another conclusion which can be drawn from here is that therefore therefore g x is not differentiable is not differentiable uh, uh, for x equals to b as well so therefore although g x is in these are continuous at x equals to a and x equal to b but they are not differentiable at x equal to a and x equal to b so so the correct options here are option first is option a is correct and option and option uh, c is correct okay so option a and option c are correct okay so let's see another question the question says let f from uh, minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 to r be given by fx equals log sec x plus tan x whole to the power 3 then fx is an odd function fx is a 1 1 function fx is an on 2 function and fx is an even function well uh, let's see here fx is given to be as log sec x plus tan x whole raised to the power 3 okay now f minus x is equal to f minus x is equal to log well we know that sec minus x is sec x so therefore we are going to write here sec x plus 
10 minus x okay so right here sec minus x as well so this will look something like this so from here f minus x equals log since uh, here here we know that uh, sec minus x equals sec x and 10 minus x equals minus of 10 x okay so therefore here log uh, uh, therefore f minus x becomes sec x minus 10 x okay so this is what it becomes but sec x minus 10 x is reciprocal of sec x plus 10 x from uh, from we can know that sec x minus 10 x if we multiply it and divide it by sec x plus 10 x into sec x plus 10 x then this becomes sec x square minus 10 x square upon sec x plus 10 x and now since sec x square minus 10 x square equal to 1 so therefore this whole expression is equal to 1 so therefore we can say that sec x minus 10 x is reciprocal of sec x plus 10 x so from here f minus x is nothing but log 1 upon log 1 upon sec x here log 1 upon sec x wait this is uh, nothing but this is log 1 upon sec x plus 10x okay so therefore f minus x is minus since uh, minus 1 is since uh, since we know that first of all since we know that log of 1 upon x is minus log x okay so therefore we can say that f minus x is minus log sec x plus 10 x okay of whole cube so which is nothing but minus of fx so therefore since f minus x is minus of x fx therefore f x is an odd function okay fx is an odd function from here we can conclude that now f dash x is equal to 3 log sec x plus 10 x Square. now applying the chain rule this will go into the reciprocal this will be sec x plus 10 x now after differentiating the term which is inside this bracket we'll get sec sec x 10 x plus sec x square okay if we simplify this if we take sec x as common so f dash x becomes 3 sec x into log sec x plus 10 x okay this is in square now this whole term this whole term now f dash x is always greater than 0 in minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 okay this whole term is always greater than 0 in this in this domain so therefore therefore f is is increasing on this domain on the given domain f is increasing on this given domain and hence f is 1 1 function this function this particular function is 1 1 okay so now since limit if we right here limit x tends to pi by 2 minus okay and uh, log sec x plus 10 x which is the fx which, are, which we are given this will tend to infinity and limit x tends to minus pi by 2 it is in plus domain so so that the function lies within the given domain 
so this particular thing will again rise to infinity which is minus of infinity so therefore we can say that range is r okay so uh, so and hence the fx is also an onto function therefore fx is an onto function so the correct options among the given ones are fx is an odd function which is correct fx is a one one function which is also correct and fx is an onto function which is also correct so the correct options are option a b and option c okay so let's see another question the question says from a point lambda 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 particulars um, perpendiculars pq and pr are drawn respectively on the lines y equals x z equals 1 and y equals minus x and z equals minus 1 if p is such that angle qpr is a right angle then the possible values of lambda is or r but let's draw a diagram here suppose this is a line this is the first line which are given here this line and this is the second line which are given this is the second line which are given this line okay and this is point q this is point p and this is point r suppose this is the case and the coordinates respectively are for points q it is suppose k k 1 these are the coordinates and for points r suppose the coordinates are are minus m m minus 1 these are according to the given conditions okay these are according to the given conditions here okay so let's uh, see and this angle is right angle and the coordinates for p are lambda 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 okay so now since x upon 1 equals y upon 1 equals z minus 1 upon 0 equals k as we have assumed and another is x upon minus 1 x upon equals y upon 1 equals z plus 1 upon 0 equals m okay these were the assumptions and then and hence uh, after solving these two we are left with the coordinates of point q and point r as kk1 and minus m m minus 1 respectively so now since uh, pq is perpendicular to line 1 since pq is perpendicular to line 1 since pq is perpendicular to line 1 so therefore the drs that is lambda minus k lambda minus k and lambda minus 1 so uh, since pq is perpendicular to line 1 so the dot product of drs should be 0 so the dot product that is lambda minus lambda minus k sorry lambda minus k plus lambda minus k plus lambda minus 1 into 0 this is into 1 this is into 1 so this will be 0 the dot product of their drs will be 0 and hence from here we can say that 2 lambda minus 2 k equals 0 which gives us lambda equals k this is the first result okay and since pr is perpendicular to line 2 since pr is perpendicular to line to line 2 according to the given conditions therefore again their drs are going to be 0 so the the dot product the the dot the dot product of their drs are going to be 0 so again from here since it is uh, it is m so in this case this will be something like uh, minus 1 into minus m plus lambda plus m minus lambda and again plus lambda plus 1 into 0 equals 0 okay so from here we can say if we if we solve it then we'll get lamb we'll get m minus lambda plus m minus lambda equals 
zero. Okay. So these are the given cases here. So again, so uh, from here, uh, this is going. This is minus. I got confused. Right? This is minus. So m m plus lambda and plus m minus lambda is going to be zero. So this will get cancelled, which gives us m equals to zero. Okay. So therefore, from here the coordinates of q, therefore coordinates of q will be lambda lambda one, and coordinates for r will be zero zero minus one. Okay. So now also since line PQ is perpendicular to PR, which we are also given in this question that line PQ is perpendicular to PR. Okay, this is also given in this question. So therefore, their respective DRs, the dot product of their respective DRs, are going to be zero. Okay, so the DR of PQ will be something like. Uh, Lambda minus k and k is we know that k is is uh, k is lambda. So this will be zero zero lambda minus one, and for p r this is going to be we know that m is zero here. So this is going to be lambda 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 plus one. Okay. So these are the dot products. So therefore. For uh, according, therefore, zero into zero into lambda into lambda plus zero into lambda plus lambda minus one into lambda plus one. This is zero. So from here, lambda equals plus minus one. So lambda equals plus one. Or lambda equals minus one. Now lambda equals to one will be rejected. Lambda equals to one. Lambda equals to one gets rejected. Okay, because because then P will coincide with Q. Okay, so therefore lambda equals to one will be rejected, and hence lambda equals minus one. This is the only solution for this. Particular question. So the correct option in this case is option C. Okay. So let's see another question. Question states: Let x, y, and z be three vectors, each of magnitude root two, and angle between each pair of them is pi by three. If A is a non-zero vector perpendicular to x and y cross c, and B is a non-zero vector perpendicular to y and c cross x, then B equals B dot z. Z minus x, a equals a dot y, y minus z, a dot b equals minus a dot y, b dot z, and a equals a dot y, z minus y. Well, according to the given conditions, we can write x vector x dot vector y equals vector y dot vector z equals vector z dot vector x equals their respective magnitudes. Okay. So we no need to write this thing, since we know that magnitudes are magnitudes are root two, root two into root two into cos pi by three. Cos pi by three is one upon two, so this is two into one upon two, which is equal to one. Okay, and let a vector a is lambda into x cross Y cr cross Z, okay, because it is given that the vector A is perpendicular to X and Y cross Z. Therefore, the direction perpendicular to X and Y cross Z is this, and this is the constant, okay, uh, which uh, is you can say that it is a normalization constant. And suppose vector B is mu into Y cross Z cross X, okay. 
So this will get reduced to lambda into y cross minus lambda into y minus z and this will get reduced to mu into z minus x. Okay. So therefore vector a dot y will be equal to vector a dot y will be equal to lambda into y dot y minus a dot y, y dot y minus z dot y. So this will be equal to lambda into 2 minus 1. y dot y is root 2 into root 2 which is equal to 1. Okay, so this is nothing but lambda. And uh, similarly, similarly b dot z will be equal to mu into z dot z minus x dot z which is mu into 2 minus 1 which is mu. So therefore vector a dot vector y is equal to lambda uh, equals to lambda into which is a dot y is lambda. So vector a dot vector y here we are so here vector a dot vector y into vector y minus vector z which equals to lambda which is a dot y here from here and y minus vector z which is nothing but vector a okay and vector b dot vector z into vector z minus vector x equals mu into vector z minus vector x which is equal to which is equal to vector b okay and since from these two since from these two we can say that vector a dot y into vector b dot z equals to lambda mu and a dot b vector a dot vector b equals lambda mu into vector y minus vector z dot vector z minus vector x which is nothing but lambda mu and if we simplify it we will get 1 minus 1 minus 2 plus 1 y dot z 1 y dot x minus 1 minus z dot z minus 2 plus z dot x which is plus 1 so it is nothing but minus lambda mu so which is minus a dot y into b dot z okay so from here therefore a dot y into z minus y equals lambda z minus y is not equal to vector a okay so from here we can conclude that uh, we can conclude that option a is correct option b is also correct and option c is also correct but option d is incorrect as in the last line we have proved it is not equal to a okay so the next question it says a circle S passes through the point 0, 1 and is orthogonal to the circles x minus 1 of whole square plus y square equals 16 and x plus y square equals 1. Then radius of S is 8, radius of S is 7, center of S is minus 7, 1 and center of S is minus 8, 1. Well, let the circle is, suppose, if we say that let the, the circle is x square plus y square plus 2fx plus 2g or here just write oh just writing the equation in some other form we write the equation as plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals 0 okay and now since it is orthogonal with since it is orthogonal with since it is orthogonal with 
uh, x minus 1 of whole square plus y square equals 16 which will get simplified to x square plus y square minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. So therefore from here 2 into minus g plus 0 equals minus 15 plus c. As we know that in case of in case of orthogonal circles in case of orthogonal circles 2 into g1 into g2 plus f1 into f2 equals c1 plus c2 if two circles are orthogonal okay so therefore therefore from here we will get that the value of minus 2 g is minus 15 plus c now this is also orthogonal with x square plus y square equals 1 since it is also orthogonal orthogonal with x square plus y square equals 1 so therefore here since g1 g2 plus f1 f2 will be 0 as product of g1 g2 will be 0 because g2 is 0 and f1 and f2 they are already 0 so here therefore 0 equals minus 1 plus c so from here the value of c is equal to 1 now if we substitute this the value of c in this expression we will get the value of this implies that g equals to 7 and circle passes through passes through 0 1 we know so if we substitute the value of g and the, in, in the in the original equation that we have assumed and the substitute the coordinates of x and y as 0 1 respectively then we will get something like this therefore 1 plus 2 f plus 1 equals 0 which gives us f equals minus 1 so therefore the circle is the circle is x square plus y square plus 14x minus 2y plus 1 equals 0 this is the equation of the circle okay so therefore uh, this circle will get simplified to this implies that that the circle is that the circle is x plus 7 of whole square plus y minus 1 of whole square equals 49 so from here we can easily conclude that the radius is 7 which is equal to 7 square so the radius is 7 and the center of the circle lies at minus 7 plus 1 so the correct options here in this case is option the radius is 7 and the center lies at minus 7 and plus 1 so the correct options are option B and option C okay so the next question says let m be a 2 into 2 symmetric mat matrix with integer and en entries then m is invertible if the first column of m is the transpose of second row of m the second row of m is the transpose of the first column of m m is a diagonal matrix with non-zero entries in the main diagonal the product of entries in the main diagonal of m is not the square of an integer okay so since m is a 2 into 2 symmetric matrix so therefore let m is this matrix a b b c okay so where a b c belongs to i okay so we know that for invertible for invertible matrix determinant of m is not equal to zero so therefore this implies that if we if we get if we calculate its determinant so therefore ac minus b square is not equal to zero which gives us that ac is not equal to b square so here the options c and option d are correct options okay because these two are the only conditions which are satisfied with this so these are the only conditions okay so let's see the next question the next question is the next question is one value integer type okay 
So the next question is one value integer type. And the question states let ABC be positive integer such that B by A is an integer. If ABC are in geometric progression and the arithmetic mean of ABC is B plus 2, then the value of A square plus A minus 14 upon A plus 1 is. Okay, so let's see that, uh, let's say that B equals AR, C equals AR square, where b upon a equals r okay and here r is greater than 1 obviously because a b and c are positive integers and uh, and since they are in gp and a is not equal to b and not equal to c so therefore r is supposed to be greater than 1 and a plus b plus c upon 3 is b plus 2 we are given here that uh, arithmetic mean is b plus 2 so therefore a plus a r plus a r square equals 3 into a r plus 2 so from here so if we simplify it this will be 3 a r plus 6 so from here a r square plus or if you write here a r square plus a r plus a equals 3 a r plus 6 so from here a r square minus 2 a r plus a equals 6. So from here we can say that a into r minus 1 of whole square equals 6. Now since r is greater than 1 and these are the integers a and b, a, b and c are integers therefore r is an integer. Now if we substitute let r let r equals 2 then a into 2 minus 1 square equals 6 which gives us a equals 6 now if r equals 3 then a in a equals 3 minus 1 whole square equals 6 which gives us a equals 6 upon 4 or 3 upon 2 which is not possible because a is an integer and same will happen with the case if we if we put r equals 4, 5, 6 or, or any other value. So therefore the only option here is a equals 6 and r equals 2. Okay. Now if we substitute this here in this uh, expression a square plus a minus 14 upon a plus 1. If we substitute the value of a as 6 then a square plus a minus 14 upon a plus 1 it will be 36 plus 6 minus 14 upon 6 plus 1 so uh, this will be 28 upon 7 which is equal to 4 so the correct answer here is 4 okay so let's see another question The question says, let n is greater than or equal to 2 be an integer, take n distinct points on a circle and join each pair of points by a line segment. Color the line segment joining every pair of adjacent points by blue and the rest by red. If the number of red and blue line segments are equal, then the value of n is. Okay, so the number of lines, the number of line joining adjacent points will be. number of lines joining adjacent points equals n because here if we plot n if we plot n n points on a circle if we draw n points on us and draw the line here then the number of points are 5 and hence the number of lines joining adjacent points are n okay so n will be equal to n c to minus n minus this particular line segments okay so since the total number of lines joining adjacent points is n we need to subtract it we need to subtract it uh, from the total uh, combinations here so that the, the total combinations are nc2 so uh, by this we will get the value of n okay so 
okay so now n equals this this is uh, this is the red i think uh, the every adjacent points by blue so this is blue well here uh, this is blue okay this is blue and this is here is red okay since red is equal to blue therefore this has to be n so n equals nc2 minus this is the total number of lines nc2 is the total number of lines so n equals nc2 minus n so therefore 2n equals nc2 which is nothing but n into n minus 1 upon 2 so from here 4n equals n square minus n or here 5n equals n square so from here this implies that n equals 0 or n equals 5 and since n is always greater than or equal to 2 so therefore the correct answer is 5 let's see another question the question says let n1 greater than let n1 smaller than n2 smaller than n3 smaller than n4 smaller than n5 be positive integers such that n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 plus n5 equals 20. Then the number of such distinct arrangements n1, n2, n3, n4, n5 is we know that n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 plus n5 equals 20. Okay. So we are going to start with n5. Now maximum of n5 equals 10 since the minimum value of n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 is 10 because n1 is going to be 1 the minimum value of n1 can be 1 so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10 so the maximum of n5 will be 10 so the only one combination is there n1 equals 1 n2 equals 2 n3 equals 3 and n4 equals 4 okay for other that is n5 equals 9 n1 equals 1 n2 equals 2 n3 equals 3 n4 equals 5 this is the only combination for n5 equals 8 n1 equals 1, n2 equals 2, n3 equals 3, n4 equals 6 and the only other combination will be or there can be one more combination which is n3 equals 4 or n4 equals 5. So these are the only combinations for n5 equals to 8. For n5 equals to 7 the combinations can be n1 equals 1, n2 equals 2, n3 equals 4 and 4 equals 6 or other combination can be n2 equals 3 and 3 equals 4 and 4 equals 5 so these are the two combinations for n equals to 7 and finally for n equals to 6 n1 equals 2 the combination n2 equals 3 and 3 equals 4 and n4 equals 5 this can be the only combination here for n equals to 6 n equals to 5 is not possible so because in that case the n1 will have to be 1 and the maximum sum will be 15 so these are the only combinations the, so the correct answer is so the correct answer is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so the correct answer is 7 the total number of seven arrangements can be possible okay so let's see another question the question says let r let f from r to r and let g from r to r be respectively given by fx equals absolute value of x plus one and gx equals x square plus one define h from r to r by hx is maximum fx of gx if x is smaller than zero and minimum at fx uh, gx if x is greater than 0 the number of points are at which hx is not differentiable is well we know that in case of any graph if the graph is something like this then these are some points at which 
at which this particular function will not be differentiable because here the slope here the slope changes abruptly at these points the slope changes abruptly so let's draw the graph for hx here okay so now first drawing for first drawing for fx this is my absolute value of x plus 1 suppose this is 1 so the value of this is fx okay so this is fx let's go for uh, the other graph that is gx it is x square plus 1 so the graph will look something like this okay this is the graph for gx this is gx so now hx is it is maximum of fx gx if x is smaller than 0 okay so maximum it means whatever lies above out of fx and gx for x equals to z f for x is smaller than 0 this is x and this is 0 then for x smaller than 0 whatever lies above will be hx so hx will be like this this is hx for x smaller than 0 for x greater than 0 it is minimum of fx and gx for x greater than 0 this is included here for x greater than 0 it is minimum so whatever lies below so the graph of hx will look something like this the graph of hx if i draw the image here it will look okay so th there are three points at which hx is not differentiable so there are actually three points this this and this there are three points at which fx uh, at which hx is not differentiable okay this is the graph for hx so the correct answer is three because at these three points the slope is changing abruptly now moving on to the next question the question is asking us to find the value of the given integral well the integral is in the form the integration from 0 to 1 4x cube d2 by dx square 1 minus x square whole to the power 5 dx well to solve this question let's solve this part of the question first uh, we can solve this part as it is d2 by dx squared and 1 minus x square raised to the power 5 well this is equal to d by dx of d by dx 1 minus x square raised to the power 5 okay so this can be written as d by dx if this integral is solved then this will look something like this into minus 2x using chain rule so this will be like d by dx into let's take the minus sign outside into 10 x 1 minus x square this is x square raised to the power 4 well uh, to go further we'll use the chain rule again this will be minus if we differentiate this whole expression then this will look something like this 10 into 1 minus x square raised to the power 4 plus 10x into into 4 1 minus x square into raised to the power 3 into minus 2x okay so uh, this will look something like this minus 10 into 1 minus x square raised to the power 4 minus 80 x square into 1 minus x square raised to the power 3 okay so this will go on to look like this this will be uh, if we take minus sign inside then this will look something like this 10 into 1 minus x square 
raised to the power 3 into 8 x square minus 1 minus x square okay so this will be 10 into 1 minus x square raised to the power 3 into 9 x square minus 1 okay so this part of this equation is this so now if we denote this expression as i we need to find the value of i then we can write i as i equals integral from 0 to 1 4 x cubed into into 10 into 1 minus x square raised to the power 3 1 minus x square raised to the power 3 into 9 x square minus 1 okay so this looks something like this okay so uh, this will uh, look further like integral from 0 to 1 40 x cubed into 1 minus x square of whole cube into 9 x square minus 1 dx here dx is there okay so now let's put 1 minus x square as t this gives us minus 2 x dx as dt okay so this further i will look like this minus integration from 0 integrate uh, limits will get changed to 1 to 0 integration from 1 to 0 into 20 x square x square is this gives us x square as 1 minus t so into 20 1 minus t into t cubed into 9 into 1 minus t Nine into one minus t minus one dt. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, if we solve it, this will look something like this. Now let's uh, interchange the limit. Now then, uh, if we change the limit from one to zero to zero to one, then negative sign will get vanished, and this will look something. Integration from zero to one into twenty t cubed into 1 minus t into into 8 minus 9 t okay so if we solve it it will be 20 t cubed minus t raised to the power 4 into 8 minus 9 t okay dt this will be 20 from 0 to 1 8t cubed minus 9t raised to the power 4 minus 8t raised to the power 4 plus 9t raised to the power 5 dt ok so now this integral is very easy to solve so i becomes 20 into t raised to the power 4 upon 2 minus 17 t raised to the power 5 upon 5 plus 9 upon 6 t raised to the power 6 from 0 to 1. If we substitute the values then i will look something like this 20 into 1 upon 2 minus 17 upon 5 plus 3 upon 2. Okay so this will be 20 into 0 0.5 0 0.5 oh, okay wait wait, wait. Uh, so no this is 2t this is not t by 2 t raised to the power 4 by 2 so this is this is 2 t raised to the power 4 this is 2 minus 17 by 5 plus 3 1 2 so this will be 20 minus 3 upon 4 plus 1.5 this will be 20 
uh, 20 into 2 minus 3.4 plus 1.5 so this will be i equals 20 into 0 0.1 so this is equal to 2 so this is the answer for this question so the correct answer for this question is 2 okay so now let's move on to another question question says the slope of the tangent to the curve this at the point 1 3 is okay so now if we differentiate the expression is the expression is y minus x raised to the power 5 whole to the power 2 equals x into 1 minus x squared whole raised to the power 2 okay so if we if uh, if uh, we differentiate the whole expression using chain rule then differentiating the expression differentiating the expression differentiating the expression we will get 2 into y minus x raised to the power 5 whole square into dy by dx minus 5 x raised to the power 4 equals it equals 1 plus x square raised to the power 2 plus 2x into 1 plus x square and now differentiating this this is into 2x okay so this uh, now let's put x equals to 1 and y equals to 3 because the point is 1 3 then this will become 2 into 3 minus uh, 2 into 3 minus 1 into dy by d x minus 5 equals 1 plus 1 whole square plus 4 into 1 plus 1 okay so from here from here we are going to get 4 into dy by dx minus 5 equals 4 plus 8 equals 12 so from here dy by dx so dy by dx minus uh, 5 equals 3 okay so from here the value of dy by dx is 8 so the slope of this curve at point 1 3 is 8 so the correct answer for this question is 8 okay so let's uh, see the other question question says the largest value of the non-negative integer a for which this expression holds true is okay so the left hand side here writing lhs here so we are going to get limit x tends to 1 minus a x plus sine x minus 1 plus a upon x plus sine x minus 1 minus 1 now this can be written as 1 minus root x into 1 plus root x upon 1 minus root x okay so this will be limit x tends to 1 a into 1 minus x plus sine plus sine uh, x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 plus sine x minus 1 okay okay now so this uh, if we if we divide the numerator and the denominator by x minus 1 then this will be limit x tends to 1 equal uh, in bracket minus a plus sine x minus 1 upon x minus 1 upon 1 plus sine x minus 1 upon x minus 1 to the power 
the power is 1 plus under root x 1 plus under root x okay now since we know that since we know that uh, limit x tends to 0 sin x upon x equals 1 okay so from here we can write limit x tends to 1 this is the LHS from here we can write LHS as limit x tends to 1 minus a plus 1 upon 1 plus 1 raised to the power 2 equals 1 upon 4 it is given it equals 1 upon 4 okay so uh, from here we can easily write that minus a plus 1 upon 2 equals plus minus 1 upon 2 so from here minus a plus 1 equals plus minus 1 from here a equals 0 or a equals 2 okay now since the largest non-negative value is us therefore this gives us a equals 2 okay the largest value of non-negative integer okay so the correct answer for this question is 2 okay fine now let's see another question question says let f from 0 to 4 pi uh, to 0 to pi be defined by fx equals cos inverse cos x the number of points x belonging to 0 to 4 pi satisfying the equation fx equals 10 minus x upon 10 okay so this question can be solved using graph and this should be solved using graph so if we plot the graph of the given expressions the graph will look something like this So uh, this uh, fx is cos inverse cos x. So the graph for fx will look something like this. Okay, this is pi, this is 2 pi, this is 3 pi, this is 4 pi. And let's draw the graph of 10 minus x upon x. So if uh, at uh, x equals to 0 the value of fx is is the value of this is 1 10 minus x upon x equals 1 at x equals 0 so so the value of 1 is here okay so now this is x and these are the functions fx and gx let uh, this is gx okay so the graph will be or the value of gx equals 0 at x equals 10 so 10 will lie somewhat here okay so the graph will look something like this the graph for gx is this now these two graphs are intersecting each other at three points this point this point and this point okay so the correct answer for this question is three the correct answer for this question is three okay so now let's see another question question says for a point p in the plane let d1 p and d2 p be the distances of the point p from the lines x minus y equals 0 and x plus y equals 0 respectively the area of the region r consisting of all points p lying in the first quadrant of the plane and satisfying two uh, small uh, two smaller than or equal to d1 p plus d2 p smaller than or equal to 4 is okay so let's draw the graph first the graph will look something like this the graph this these two will be the lines this is x minus uh, this is x plus y equals 0 and this line is x minus y equals 0 okay so now 
the distance is this is x this is y so now the distances will be the same here okay suppose we are taking two distances here so d1p and d2p are these okay so this is x1 this is x2 this is y2 this is y1 or to write more clearly this is y1 this is y2 this is x1 this is x2 okay so now uh, the area consists consisting of all points p lying in the first quadrant we are asked to find the area that is lying in the first coordinate so we are supposed to find only this area okay so we can find this area if we get y1 and y2 and x1 and x2 which satisfies these conditions okay so now if x greater than 0 and y is greater than 0 then 2 will be this condition will be, be satisfied like this okay so from here 2 is smaller than or equal to 2x upon root 2 smaller than or equal to 4 so from here x is x is greater than or equal to root 2 and smaller than or equal to root 2 so x1 is root 2 and x2 is 2 under root 2 okay similarly if if uh, similarly if y is greater than x then this gives us y greater than or, or equal to root 2 and smaller than or equal to 2 root so this value is y1 is root 2 y2 is 2 root 2 okay now easily we can calculate the area this length is this length is root 2 okay so uh, now from here we can uh, we can get the area as therefore area equals 2 into since uh, this length is root 2 similarly on y axis this will be root 2 therefore the area will be this will be root 2 okay this length will also be root 2 this is root 2 as y1 is root 2 therefore this is root 2 so this area will be root 2 into root 2 plus this area and to get this we will just we will simply multiply this whole area by 2 ok multiplying this whole area by 2 will get the area of these two regions so the area of this region is root 2 into root 2 and area of this region is half into root 2 into this is also root 2 half into root 2 into root 2 so the total area is 2 into root 2 into root 2 plus half into root 2 into root 2 ok so this area is required area is 2 into 2 plus 1 which is equal to 6 square unit ok so the correct answer for this question is 6 ok now so let's move on to the last question the question says let a b and c be 3 non uh, coplanar unit vectors such that the angle between every pair of them is pi by 3 if a cross b plus b cross c equals p a plus q b plus r c where p q and r are scalars then the value of p square plus 2 q square plus r square upon q square is ok so now here it is given that 
a cross b plus b cross c equals p a plus q b plus r c okay now if we calculate this we know that this equals a cross a a cross b a cross c b cross a b cross b uh, b dot a sorry this is dot a dot a a dot b a dot c b dot a b dot b b dot c c dot a c dot b and uh, and uh, c dot c so since the they are unit vectors they are coplanar non coplanar unit vectors so a dot a b dot b c dot b is 1 and the angle between every pair of them is pi by 3 so cos pi by 3 is 1 upon 2 so a dot b a dot c b dot a b dot c c dot a c dot c uh, c uh, c dot a and c dot b is 1 by, is 1 1 upon Okay, so this value is 1, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 2, 1, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 2, 1 upon 2, 1. Okay, so from here, this, uh, uh, if we simplify it, this will become 1 into 1 minus 1 upon 4 minus 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 2 minus 1 upon 4 into 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 4 minus 1 upon 2 so from here this is if we simplify it this will become 3 upon 4 minus 1 upon 8 minus 1 upon 8 equals 1 upon 2 so therefore a b c this square equals 1 upon 2 so from here from here this expression equals plus minus 1 upon root 2 okay now we know that this expression is this this is nothing but a dot a dot uh, a cross b plus b cross c so from here a dot a cross b plus b cross c equals equals p plus q upon 2 plus r upon Okay, so since uh, uh, this is p plus q upon two plus r upon two because uh, because uh, a dot a cross b because this will be vector a dot into vector a dot into p a plus q b plus r c p a plus q b plus r c okay so this will be p plus q upon 2 plus r upon 2 and since we know that this is equal to plus minus 1 upon root 2 okay so from here so from here plus minus 1 upon root 2 equals p plus root 2 equals p plus q upon 2 plus r upon 2 okay so now now from from here uh, we can write that uh, to p plus q plus r equals plus minus under root 2 okay now similarly now suppose this is the first expression this is first so going for the second expression similarly Similarly, b dot a cross b plus b cross c 
equals p upon 2 plus q plus r upon 2. Now if we keep on solving in the same manner, we will get the second expression as p plus 2q plus r equals 0. Okay, and now same and and vector c dot a cross b plus b cross c this is equal to p upon 2 plus plus uh, q upon 2 plus r okay so so from here if we again if we keep on solving this is expression 2 now again if we keep on solving it we will get p plus q plus 2r equals plus minus under root 2 this is our third expression so from first second and third therefore from first second and third from first second and third we can say that p equals r equals minus of q okay so now we can write therefore this implies that uh, this implies that p equals r equals plus minus 1 upon root 2 and q equals minus plus 1 upon under root 2 so therefore p square plus 2 q square plus r square upon q square equals equals well we do not need the value here we can simply use this expression write uh, write p and r as minus q then we'll get q square plus 2 q square plus q, q square upon q square so this will be 4 so the correct answer for this question is 4 the correct answer is 4 okay so that's all with the paper 1 mathematics section of jee advanced 2014